Welcome to another mid thirties Celsius midsummer's day in England. Whew, it is hot and it's become positively normal for it to be this hot. Every day, bang, mid thirties. God, I love it. Again, apologies for my naked attire. My lack of garments, but you'll forgive me it being a, a mid 30 degree day and all. I was thinking about like blackberries again, and blackberries are delicious, they are delish. And they always grow with these huge thorns, these huge spikes, making it difficult for anybody to scrump the blackberries. So they're not providing blackberries for people to enjoy, otherwise they wouldn't have a defence mechanism like thorns to keep people from taking the blackberries, right? So that begs the question why then produce such delicious succulent fruit if you don't want things to enjoy to gorge on that fruit you're supplying why would you do that then why well i think it's because life has to express itself life will always find a way to express itself even in what it expresses becomes highly desirable to to consumers even if the purpose isn't to provide consumption or something to be consumed if all that makes sense it's still got to express itself anything beautiful that will be or, de or delicious that will be consumed by some other organism will still be expressed because that's the the purpose of life to express itself in all its beauty but there's another question I was thinking about too I think that's the answer I mean I don't know but that's how it lands with me but there's another question and that is what is the relationship between stinging nettles and blackberries or blackberry bushes I mean there's a relationship a reciprocal relationship so stinging nettles again they deter and protect the blackberry and the blackberry bushes from gaining access to the blackberries. But what do stinging nettles get out of it? What's what's their win? What do they get out of thriving in close proximity to blackberry bushes? It's an interesting one, isn't it? And stinging nettles, as a plant, as a weed, are quite amazing. They really are. They're, they're such a, a deterrent to any living organism that wants to go into that domain. Quite brilliant. Quite an amazing plant. You know, everything has its purpose, doesn't it? And it just has to express itself and find a way of expressing itself. But I couldn't think of... what the stinging nettles get back in return. But maybe it's the richness of that area of um, life in the soil, you know, in the turf, and that which allows the, the, the blackberry bushes to thrive, to grow, that richness is probably needed 
or desirable, desirable conditions for stinging nettles to thrive. Maybe it's that, I don't know. But, you know, it's just the richness of life, the way it just comes, endlessly comes back. You know, it will all die and then next summer, next spring, next summer, it will come again. Like the trillions of leaves in every tree on the planet, however many there are, when they die in the autumn, will come back again next spring and then the spring after and the spring after and they've done that for hundreds of millions and billions of years and we'll do it for hundreds of millions and billions of years to come you know that for me is the definition of wealth of opulence of abundance that is the definition of that vastness on a massive scale it just keeps coming and coming and coming it's beautiful and that is who i am that is who we are you know we are whatever we see because we're all connected if you can see it you're it if you understand it know it you are it i think i spoke about that in a previous video about the the trillion trillion stars one trillion trillion stars and again such a massive number and never ending stars being formed new stars being formed all the time and on it goes on it goes that ball of energy up there in the sky that is the reason we're all here gives all this life to this planet and solar system and it's one of the most common things in the universe there are a trillion trillion of them out there and it's a number you can't acquaint to any anything on earth I mean this is what I read um, from a very credible source actually uh, a science journal, a peer-reviewed science journal. So grains of sand on the planet wouldn't reach a number of a trillion trillion. Blades of grass on the planet wouldn't reach a number of a trillion trillion. It's such a big number. And it's never ending, that's the thing. I mean, even if they, even if it was a finite amount, It would take so, so long to for those stars to disappear, but they're constantly being born, formed, constant, that number is constantly being added to. It's quite phenomenal. I've spoken enough. I've taken up enough of your time. I'm out of here. Happy Summer's Day. Enjoy.